recognizing a communist, physical appearance counts for nothing. If he openly declares himself to be a communist, we take his word for it. But there are other communists who don't show their real faces, who work more silently. An evil so pervasive that the whole society had to be mobilized to combat it. Next speaker. Joanne Maziarz Dickey. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I also would like to speak on IL 044611 and IL 04711. I'd like to thank Dennis for bringing this up, the two resolutions at, the, at this time, because it's an election time. And how soon after legislators are voted into office do they forget about the people that put them there? It becomes all about them. The insurance is the first example. Part-time employees with costly benefits. My legislator makes a six-figure salary with the state. Does the state not provide insurance or does the state pay an employee for not taking the insurance? So instead of taking the state insurance, he takes the county insurance. Is this being considered as a double dipper? Does a legislator ever tell you when he or she comes to the door to ask for your vote that they're going to get the best health care package for going to two meetings a month and taking off three months in the summer? No way. We have a legislator here who retired from Delphi and not only gets a health benefit from Delphi, but is also we're, taking uh, we're the county into personal insurance. Reflections. Well, I did you not mention the person's you name. Your dislikes. I That's am. fine. We accept them. But every time you point out something specifically, it's a personal reflection. I will not accept that. You know me better than that. Delphi insurance is good enough for Delph for Delphi brothers and Unit sisters. Off now, deputy, bring her to her seat. She can come back up there and finish. But bring her to her seat now. She can come back up. She I want to. has two minutes. I'm not going to accept. All right. If I stop on that, I want to thank legislator Syracuse for have, what. If you want to speak. Okay. Fine. But I warn about personal reflections. I will not accept it. Wow. 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 Thank you very much. Next speaker. Somehow, once individuals achieve office, they take on a whole different attitude. And unfortunate, that's very unfortunate. You should think of yourselves as candidates at all times. You got something else to say? Well, my name, name No, wait, wait, Dan. That wasn't coming from you. It didn't come oh. from me. Okay. Mrs. Swan, you're on. Thank you, Mr. Russ. Uh, first of all, I think that could have waited till I finished, don't you? Um, I'm speaking about IL-046 and IL-047. First of all, Dennis, thank you very much. I have been coming to these legislative meetings for well over 25 years, and I have to say you are probably the best legislator we have ever had. You're caring, you listen to the people, and as my old legislator said, he was a servant of the people. That is lacking from, met, not all of you, but that's lacking from many of you in here. And it's a shame that everything has gotten to this point and that we have to be yelling at people in the, in the audience. And I know many of us sometimes aren't respectful to you, and we should be. But we would appreciate it if you would listen to us, too. And, and it's getting to the point, many of you don't even want to talk to us anymore. Well, we do have a legitimate uh, problem to talk to you about. Uh, we're not your enemy. Believe me, we're not your enemy. You're more or less our enemy. We're paying your salary. But we would like to be able to talk to you sometimes when problems come up. Uh, I would like to see that uh, general speaking brought back. And I think we both sides need to respect each other. And as far as um, part-time legislators, part-time attorneys, part-time workers for the county, nobody should be getting any kind of insurance or benefits. 
Where in the pub private sector do you find this? And with the economy going the way it is now, it needs to stop. And I think, uh, I think if you legislators would really take a good look at it, I think many of you are retired from some other place, and I'm not pointing a finger at anybody. Many of you are retired at, from some other place. And if you have insurance, by all means, that's what it's there for, take it. But I don't think anybody should be elected to this job for the benefit of the health benefits. And I know at one time it was even worse because you could get all kinds of cosmetic surgery and everything else. But thank God that's over with. But anyway, so I think if you legislators want to do something for us and be a servant to us, maybe you would come up and listen to Dennis's resolution and pass it and say all health benefits or any kind of benefits is over for any part-time employee, elected or not elected. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Ms. Swan. Are there any other speakers? Yes. Can I just say something now, since Mr. Up the Grove had his? Are you going to do it from there? 20 minutes, yes, I'll do it from there. Yeah. Uh, just to go back, because I, I was the co-author to put this public speaking session back in 19, I think it was 1993 or? 92. 92, okay, and uh, Kurt Hopkins and myself, who was a uh, fellow legislator, a Republican from Wilson, uh, co-sponsored it with me. The original resolution called for three minutes uh, on agenda items and three minutes for the good of the county. So that was there in the beginning. Uh, but when it went to committee, um, the, at the time the Republicans were in control, uh, they just chopped and chopped and chopped at it. Um, they just decided that three minutes, uh, we had to compromise it just three minutes for the good of the county and agenda items. But originally it was three minutes and three minutes. Um, they also put the public on probation for six months, if you remember. That they said they wouldn't vote on this in its entirety. They wanted to see how the public, if you remember, it was they, reviewed after six months. They, no, they put them on probation for six months. They wanted to see how this was going to reflect on everything and everything else. So they just passing it and say, yeah, it's a good idea. They put the public on probation. Well, anyways, fine. After that six months went, uh, we took a vote on it and we passed it as is. And it was fine for 15 years until two years ago. And, you know, I think that's a, a total... Uh, disgrace that uh, we make the public sit here. If someone comes here just to squawk about a problem in their neighborhood or in their district, they have to be here at 6 o'clock to sign up because that's what it says. All right, They have to be here an hour before the meeting. They have to sit here from 6 o'clock to maybe sometimes 10 o'clock at night just so they could tell us a problem that they're having. That's not fair. That's not fair. I mean, they should be able to speak in the beginning of the meeting, say what they have to say uh, about the agenda items, and also if anything's you know wrong in their district or in their neighborhood. They should be able to say that at that time and then go home to their families. They shouldn't have to sit here for three and four hours to lengthy presentations. By the time we get done tonight, it's going to be 10 o'clock. So if somebody out there has something that's a concern in their neighborhood, uh, like that one lady did about uh, the plant over there, but luckily we let her go ahead and jump ahead. Otherwise, she would have had to sit here until 10 o'clock that night. That's not fair. And that's why I want to bring this back, give the public back their, their public speaking. It's, it's not a big deal to us. What's the big deal? You know what I mean? It's just, it's, it, it's a benefit to us, too. Because then we don't have to sit here and, and wait till 10 o'clock to hear what the people have to say. Thank, Thank you. For your comments. By the way, the average length of the meetings, 15 of them, we were out by 9 o'clock, Dennis, and if you want those figures, I'll give them to you. Uh, yeah, I will. 15 of the meetings. <clears throat> you want the meeting set? Uh, you said it. You asked me if I had anything else to say, and I could challenge you on one thing that I... I do not you need to hear to anything channel. else from you. If you want to speak, God willing, and I hope I'm here September 20th, certainly you have as much time as you want at the end of the meeting. Now, is that the end of our... Okay, very good. Now, just a... Good evening. My name is David Mangello. A few residents and I started a program called the Niagara Project. 
Um, we use the website that some of you know about, takebackniagara.com. What we simply do is educate residents how the grassroots of government works and how it was intended to work. Um, there's a picture in the back wall of a George Washington. Uh, we, we strongly believe in a lot of documents that our founding fathers have put in place to protect the rights of the residents in this country. And, and we have seen some major issues that go on throughout the country, federal government, state, and county. Um, in George Washington's farewell address, he warns the American people that the political parties will destroy this country. Because of a process that was put in place over 100 years ago, I'm now elected to represent the Republicans in my voting district at the county level that influences the state and federal level. Now by law, I have to be invited to party meetings that entail choosing and voting for party leaders, rules, choosing and endorsing candidates, and most, most disturbingly, choosing the commissioner of the Board of Elections. Why is it a disturbing part of the Board of Elections? Because just about all of our elected officials are double dipping. They, are, they have created an illusion of a free society by stopping the residents from getting on the ballot. Most of our town, city, county, state elected officials become elected again as precinct committee men so they can choose the chairman of the county of the Board of Elections, thus controlling the counting of the votes and the information out of the Board of Elections. In my opinion, this is a major conflict of interest, especially when family members of elected officials, government attorneys, contractors become elected as a committee people or person, thus controlling the appointments, endorsements, and petitioning for someone running for office. It is so bad elected officials and committee people are the only ones working at the Board of Elections. In my opinion, it should be more of a civil service job. At one of these meetings, I asked over half the committee people to recuse themselves from voting because there was a direct vote that would affect their pay and benefits. Of course, they refused to do that. How bad is it? In Niag the Niagara County Board of Elections has refused to give residents information to help them run for elected positions. The Board of Elections made, made, them, made certain residents run in circles to get information. And in the end, he never received it. One of these residents had to come to me for the information in a petition to run for office. H how sad is that? This, this goes on right in our own county. The Board of Elections doesn't even employ anyone from other parties, the minor lines. We did not understand this until recently elected officials like city mayors, State senators have family members switch party affiliation and become committee members of that party to simply control the endorsement of the conservative independent far parties, working families, and so on and so forth. This year, we had a few residents that wanted to get on the conservative committee. Uh, we confronted the Board of Elections. They didn't even have maps for us to figure out which areas they actually lived in. Um, we ended, never ended up getting the information. The people got turned off about it. And we ended up foiling the petitions of people that ran in 2009 and the people that turned in petitions this year. Uh, most disturbingly was a lot of the people that were turned in petitions in 2009, or they didn't turn in petitions. They found out that other people turned petitions in forums, so they never were really informed they were elected in these positions on the Conservative Party. So to come to find out this year and two, two years previously, um, the Republican Party were the ones that turned in the petitions for the conservatives. Not one conservative, well, but one did. One conservative uh, person that belongs in the conservative party turned in a petition, um, and that petition was protested and kicked out at the Board of Elections. So the one person that really wanted to get on, they were kicked out because of technicality, which could have been overlooked. Our founding fathers only intended residents to be involved in this process, not elected officials, contractors, and family members of elected officials. How do we, as a free society, accept this type of behavior? It is simply unacceptable and needs to be stopped. That's about the Board of Elections.